So I'm Emily Wolfcool. and I'm calling together the meeting of the Town of Deerfield Planning Board on Monday, June 6th, 2022. Kathy, could you read our introduction? Sure. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. <clears throat> Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. Thank you, thank you. Um, as usual, and uh, primarily for those of us here in person, that we have our meeting guidelines to speak one at a time, following our Deerfield Code of Conduct to be respectful, considerate, and courteous, uh, as well as concise, non-repetitive, and recognized by the chair. So I will um, call, identify board members in attendance. Kathy. Kathy um, Sylvester here. here. And Anne Mary. Anne Mary Clutier here. Denise. Oh, well. Denise Mason here. Andrea Liebson here. Kathy Wachoba here. And Emily Wolf Cole here. So we have our full complement of. Oh, and Rachel. Rachel has not yet come. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so ooh, reviewing the minutes, um, I have had some conversations with Rachel and also with um, Jen in particular, uh, or uh, Casey, um, we are behind on our minutes. Uh, we have minutes from May 9th, 19th, and the 25th. And I think those were not uh, totally distributed. Any of them were distributed to you, were they? No, I don't believe so. I know that Rachel has been working hard to try to have those minutes be as comprehensive as possible, especially in relation to our public hearing. So I appreciate that. But um, there's actually two rather conflicting um, statements in the uh, Massachusetts bylaws statutes. One that states uh, minutes need to be done in a timely manner, which is considered within the next three public body hearings or 30 days, whichever is later. But then um, I understand from Casey that our town council has stated that um, potentially maybe there with case law or um, potentially some other rulings by the courts that uh, the standard has become a little bit more condensed with uh, minutes being draft minutes being available within 10 days and minutes arrived approved monthly. So um, uh, Casey has mentioned that she is going to try to create a guideline for all of the boards in Deerfield to follow these 10 days or, or monthly um, guidelines. So um, Rachel will be working to, by our next meeting, have our minutes from the 9th, 19th, 25th, and this evening. Haley, can I speak to that? Yes, second? yes. Um, I was the clerk for a long time, and it's a, it's a huge job. It's like mm -hmm. hours and hours and hours. Um, and I'm sure, I 100% am sure that Rachel is doing her best, but I think it speaks to like, we really need to rotate this job. Like, even if it's yearly, like I did it for a few years in a row and it's draining. So if we could, I know that tonight is a night that we're gonna be talking about switching up roles and stuff. So um, if we could figure out a way to do that so it's shared more equitably, you know. Right, that might be something too. Um, I'm not sure how many people on the on the um, planning board realize that Sue Berlot, who has been our administrative assistant for the planning board um, is moving on to something else. 
And so we don't really at this point have a plan B. Right. When, um, because at one point, even there was a question, would the assistant do the minutes and then the clerk would edit and- It happens all the time, actually. Like since I've been on the board, they're always, and I don't mean to say they, it has been said repeatedly that, well, someone else, you know, as soon as we get administratively, you know, our ducks in a row, but unfortunately that hasn't, the stars haven't lined up for us. Mm -hmm. So it puts a lot of pressure on, you know, sure. us board members. Yes. Uh, Andrea. And I was going to say that I had strongly encouraged that we have someone who is not serving on the board, mm -hmm. prepare the minutes and have the clerk review them because mm -hmm. I, I have served as a secretary, a clerk on other boards and find you can't fully participate yes. if you are busy yeah, writing yeah. notes yep, exactly. uh, to you know mm -hmm. so it would be my preference that we would find i mean someone. we can continue with this con discussion even right now because it's right pretty close on our agenda anyway um it's good um well and that's the thing if you want to participate you end up participating and then watching the whole meeting again later to right. do the notes and it's it's a lot for a volunteer right. position um the massachusetts guidelines state that the minutes need to be comprehensive enough so that if someone had not attended the meeting, they would understand what had gone on. And I think there's varying degrees of detail with that. I think for our public hearings, they've been quite a bit more comprehensive. I'm, I don't think they have to be quite as comprehensive tonight. I mean, like right now, discussion on best ways of managing <laughs> meeting <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Yes, Denise. I was, I was going to say, I think that's a continued conversation. It might be good to talk with Casey or whomever, you know, is involved in hiring the new person to make that part of their job and also the training and possibly have a template so that, you know, a simple template. I know that, that um, I know Ann Mary and I'm sure others have used, I know um, Lily does that with our CCI meetings, just uses the um, agenda and then yes, know, yes, just bumps yes. it down and does that. So I think we could you know, have that conversation with Casey to make it. And I agree with Andrea, I cannot fully mm -hmm. be fully engaged in the meeting and take minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. So. So where are we with this? I mean, right now, I think that the, first of all, I do know that um, there's a big push to try to replace Sue as soon as possible, but also a job, a new job description is going through the personnel board. That's next Monday night. And then there's recruitment and notice and hiring and orientation. So maybe several months before we have someone. Right. So, I mean, it still may be a work in progress, but um, to my to my knowledge, Rachel was, well, maybe that goes on to the next part of our agenda. So maybe let's keep this in mm -hmm. mind as we scoot into that agenda um, in terms of backup. I don't know that I have a backup in my mind. <laughs> so um, new business, Chris Curtis contract renewal. Actually, when we put this on the agenda, when I put it on the agenda, it was a, a slightly different. It's been um, morphed a, bit, a little bit. Um, Chris's contract, uh, Chris, first of all, is working with us right now on our accessory apartment bylaws. Um, and uh, he, his current contract continues through June 30th. Um, so there was a question of whether or not we could or should tonight um, uh, renew his contract for starting in July 1st. What, um, with some conversations with Brenda, the accountant, as well as as Casey, what we've also, and Chris determined is that um, Chris does have some, he has uh, 16, 17 hours left on his current contract, does not anticipate using it between all of it between now and June 10th. So Brenda is looking at rolling, I think the word is encumbering those um, hours over to the next fiscal year, the 10 hours, 10, he thinks he might use five or six of them now and then roll the additional um, uh, leftover hours, if you will, over to uh, the next fiscal year so we could use them. And then depending on where we are with our um, accessory apartment bylaw, we may want to um, speculate more specifically how much um, we might need to help have him help us finish the accessory apartment bylaw. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think that makes total sense. And by the way, I mean, I was talking with Casey did mention that there is um, for, over the course of the last 10 years, there's been a bill that's been floating around 
at the state level, and it's called H5250, it's 40R, and it's zoning, zoning for housing. Right. And, you know, the thing is, is that um, the state supersedes the town. So if they decide all of a sudden they mm. want to change things, mm. then whatever we do is going to basically be a waste of time. I hate to say that, but so, you know, I think... I think the way you're proceeding sounds really good. Um, and I would suggest that waiting till the end of the session, which is July 31st, to see where to see what they've done. Right, Chris is actually, already on, on checking okay. that out with yeah, the to do something. ADU bylaw. That, and if not, that never well, then we can decide how to move forward. Right, yeah. right, good. Okay. Um, so here we are back to what we were just talking about earlier. Um, I don't believe... Uh, I don't believe we need any official action uh, from the accountant or anything to to continue to roll. Um, Chris is six or ten hours over into the following year. I don't think that needs any particular vote or anything. Um, so we have um, several planning board offices and then planning board appointments. Um, maybe I'll start with, although with something easiest, um, I think, uh, Andrea, you mentioned that uh, you were appointed by uh, the um, town, moderator. town moderator for open space, and you were, oh, I have you down as being appointed by the uh, planning board, but it's not, it's by the town moderator, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. you were going to contact him? I did, and he was happy to have me do that. Uh, I, have, I have to be sworn in. <laughs> Again, every year. So that is, that is the one part that is missing from open space. Right okay. Now. So if Rachel is going to be listening to these minutes, <laughs> this, this Zoom, um, the first thing is that uh, in terms of our reappointments, that Andrea, you have been reappointed by the moderator, but you will be sworn in for your next term, which will be five twenty or six twenty two to five twenty three, right? Yes. Okay, cool. I don't think there's anything else by the moderator, is there? Does anybody else know of anything that they've been appointed to by the moderator? No, okay. Um, I have been appointed by the planning board to the Franklin Regional Planning Board. And I did, I mean, I've been appointed by the select board. I asked them to reappoint me. And to be honest, I don't know if that happened or not. So I imagine <laughs> it did, yeah, right. Okay. Um, so, and I, and I will say that I've heard, thank you for those of you who um, got back to me about uh, what you were interested in, in terms of your current positions, as well as anything future. And, um, and also we do have a, um, a model that seems to be happening right now with individuals picking up when they can for um, smaller chunks of time, just like Andrea for fees and Kathy. Kathy is now our chair for the accessory apartment work group. So really appreciate that. And those, the rest of us who aren't <laughs> stepping up at that point, we will try to support, mm -hmm. support you as we can. Um, so we have maybe um, as one slate, we have um, all of the ones that are appointed by the, I mean, if we want to have it as a slate, planning, um, the appointed by the planning board, there's Anne-Mary Cloutier for Franklin Regional Planning Board, uh, Denise for CIPC, myself for CP, I'm not on CPC, CPC, you are. So I'm CIPC. I'm CPC, CPC is. You're the, um, oh God, preservation. Conservation C CPA? No, CP. <laughs> I mean, oh, CCI. CPC. No. CPC. <laughs> CPC. CPC. First of all, what's CPC? CPC. It's, it's capital Planning Committee. I'm not on that. No, it's not Capital Planning. Community Preservation. CPA. Oh, Community Preservation Committee that does CPA stuff. Yes. I am on that. You are. <laughs> Too many acronyms. Too many acronyms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, Denise CCI, myself CCI. Uh, I'm also on MVP, which may now be being called Open or um, Green Development. Um, uh, Andrea on the Open Space Committee, as we just well just said, and then myself on Senior Housing. Um, are there any 
requests for, uh, or maybe I'll have a motion for that and then we can have some discussion. A motion to um, reappoint people as noted um, to these various boards and committees. I so move. I second. Okay, and discussion. I guess to begin with, is there anybody who says, who wants to, I don't know, fight me for CBC? I just don't know what the heck I was doing. I'm sorry, and Anne Mary, could you mind what committee? I do Kirkhoff. Kirkhoff, thank you. But I don't have you here for that. Yeah, I'm Kirkhoff. Well, I have Franklin Regional Planning, FR Franklin Regional Planning Board, but not on Kirkhoff. Do you go to, you, you go to Frick Hog meetings that are different? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, give me a I minute. Thought, okay. <laughs> um, then in the meantime, I did um, check with Denise, um, who is gracefully agreed to serve as another term as vice chair. Um, I unless someone else wants to do it i'm happy to continue yep. we're happy to have you continue <laughs> <laughs> it was quick you're a good team right there. Right. chair and vice chair <laughs> oh good okay <laughs> yes 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 all right so back then to our um non-planning board offices um we did have a motion to approve that slate of appointments and second are there any other is there any other discussion on that all right so let's vote on that slate um kathy sylvester kathy sylvester yes we'll just go around starting with you and mary amory clutier yes news mason yes andrea leibson yes kathy Mitrova, yes and emily wolfkul yes so um unanimously reappointed um, and then um, I did not hear otherwise from Rachel, so I think she is interested in continuing as clerk. Uh, Denise has mentioned uh, that unless someone else wants to step up, she's willing to continue as vice chair and the same for myself. Um, so maybe if we can have a motion for those three and then we can have some second in discussion. It should be for chair, vice chair, and clerk. Can we, I feel a little bad doing this to Rachel without <laughs> her being here. Mm. We could certainly hold. Well, let's see. Should we have that in discussion? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, then, do you want to make a motion separate? I, I do want to make a motion that we separate out that um, responsibility and discuss it when everybody's here. Is that second? Second. So I'm seeing a lot of people mm -hmm. nodding mm -hmm. that, that that makes sense. sense. I don't want to volunteer. Uh, no, no. Right. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what our. So I move that um, we take the clerk position from the slate of candidates that we're approving tonight and move it to the next regular meeting of the planning board. <sighs> Second? Second. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Discussion? That's sensible. Yeah. Um, Kathy? Kathy Sylvester, yes. Hey, Mary Cloutier, yes. Denise Mason, yes. And Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Retrovi, yes. And Emily Wolf Cool, yes. So um, the motion passes, and I think that makes a lot of sense. So if we could have a motion on the um, chair and vice chair. I move that um, Anna Lee Wolf uh, serve as president of the board of, or, or chair chair make a friend chair and that Denise Mason serve as vice chair to the board uh, the planning board I second I second it any further discussion no but can I remind people to state when they're saying something state their name so whoever listens to it they'll know who said what thank you thanks you want to be clerk too <laughs> no, no, <I> don't. <laughs> All, right. All right, so we'll call the question. Kathy? Kathy Sylvester, yes. Anne Mary Cloutier, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Wachovia, yes. And Annalie Wolfkul, yes. So congratulations to us. Congratulations. Ah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Moving forward. 
uh, for old business. Ah, Andrea, uh, we're on planning board initiatives. And yes. Uh, I sent some materials to planning board members, both a little table that had planning board fee comparison, the figures that we um, approved at our May 9th meeting, and the figures that had been uh, the standard before that. And um, the fig this information also needs to be entered into the regulations governing fees and fee schedules for the planning board. The last version had been revised August 17th, 2015. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to discuss, um, especially the document of the regulations because we did not discuss that at our last meeting and turned out it wasn't as straightforward as one would think where we could just plug in the numbers. So these two documents will be um, subject to the uh, public hearing, which will take place on July 11th. 11. And so we are just having a discussion now about them so that we would be prepared for the July 11th public hearing. And um, we, may, we might, I believe we might need to vote on that as a date later on. So at the end of this, don't let us forget that on okay. July 11th. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. So I hope you have this copy. I tried to make the changes uh, in red so that they would be easier to see. My version didn't always have, <laughs> have the color, so I apologize. Um, I don't believe that there are any changes in section one, which is the introduction, excuse me. <laughs> Apparently there is, yes. Uh, let's see, one, one. Um... The first sentence actually, the planning board has adopted regulations. This is like really small governing fees and a new schedule of fees for various types of applications um, for review conducted by the. I don't know, it just seemed, that just seemed redundant. Is that redundant? I decided that some of this may be legal ease or mm -hmm. historical, historically present, and maybe let's not fuss with that. Okay, mm -hmm. that was my approach. Move on. I did uh, so under purpose. By the way, under one point two purpose, I did look up General Law Chapter Forty Four, Section Fifty Three G, so I would know what it said, and it allows the imposition of reasonable fees, especially for consultants for boards, and so we are doing this according to what the state has said we should do. In section two, I believe there were, there should be no changes. Well, correct me if, there, if I am wrong. Section three, the administrative fees in 3.1 applicability and, sub, and 3.2 sub, submittal. I did not see any reason to change anything. Under section 3.3, site plan review, we had agreed on May 9th that we would change the fee to be $250 and and uh, that would be it. We would not say anything about square footage. B, modification or extension of a site plan review shall also require the same fee noted above. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. Um, section uh, part C says that the special permit review is a $250 fee and we removed the square footage things. Section D, I believe is misworded because it says the exact same thing as B. And I believe it has, instead of, it, use, it says modification or extension of site plan shall also require fee specified above. I think the correct wording is modification or extension of special permit, which was indicated in C, shall also require the fee. Does that make sense to everyone? Because, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. okay, mm -hmm. good. So it, it should be, Special yes. permit, thank you. Um, e, approval not required, uh, did not change. F, preliminary subdivision plan, that was $200, changed to $200, uh, plus all of these costs for um, consultants, yes. 
Annalise. Well, isn't that the case for everything that if we have a consultant for any of these, and we talk about that later on, so I don't think we need to say that here, do we? I mean, since, since later on we say, I forget what section, we say yes. that we might be imposing- In four, in section piece. four. Right. Yes. I don't know that we need to say it. I like less ambiguity though. I'd yes, say I would agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So should we have that then in each one of them? You know, because well, we, we mm -hmm. for the others too? I think we risk if we don't have a consistency through the whole document, then why here, not here, why here, not here? I think that's a risk. <laughs> yep. That was what we learned last yes. week. Yes. 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 So one question is: Should that? Should this? In for this. Plus. Should the from plus on be added to three point three the the beginning? Yeah. Maybe it should all go up there. Mm. That's that yeah, makes that's, more does sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I think okay, that makes so that I'm going to for the following. Something yes. To that effect. Okay. I will move this up to here. Mm. Okay. Yeah. G, definitive subdivision plan, it's five hundred dollars per proposed lot plus one hundred dollars per lot. And I fail to include modification to definitive subdivision, which would be letter H. So I apologize. That will end up in the final version. Okay, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that was modification. Right? Yes, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. In section 3.4, I didn't see any changes, nor 3.5, nor 3.6. Did I'm sorry for the modification. I forget. I couldn't quite see from my notes. What did we agree on for modification? Two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, moving on to pr project review fees, the applicability. So I wonder if it should be called project consultant review fees, because this is all about the hiring of consultants to, oh. to help us. And I, if it's, if it's, um, explicit that review is being done by a consultant, then it's fine. Otherwise, I thought it might be helpful to have that word there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, I didn't think there needed to be changes to 4.1 applicability, 4.2 submittal. 4.3, I again stuck in the word consultant, but we, if it's there at the beginning, we probably don't need it. And all of these, the dollar amounts have to do with how much you expect a cons consultants to charge. And it's to have the money set aside, deposited by, you know, paid by the applicant, deposited into a special, uh, escrow, escrow account is 53G account. No, that's where the money goes. Uh -huh. So, for okay. example, if when we were doing the park and we wanted uh, to have a peer review and it were not um, a park done by the town, but by some private entity, we would say you need to put, uh, we are going to hire a consultant to review things. Here's how much money needs to go into this account based on what is being done. Uh, but I have a question then. Do we know how uh, valid these amounts might be now? Could we, maybe one of the things we as a board might consider is if Andrea talks with Jen or Casey or whomever and, and realizes that some of these consultant fees may need to be increased, that um, we, give them the discretion to go ahead and increase accordingly for what would be discussed at our public hearing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would suggest Casey? I don't know if it's Casey. Or, or, or would Brenda be the right person? I, have, I don't I know. Yeah, it might be Brenda. I after, after July 1st. <laughs> Just because yeah. she's crazy. Oh, oh. right. 
Okay. Uh, whose accounts pay and which Okay. But, but, right. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah. yes, uh, about the dollar amounts. Okay. Also, the, uh, there's a, an interest rate that comes later. Right. And like, why is that? Yeah. Right. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. So, the, so that, it, I think we're, are we in agreement that that's okay? Every, all the other text is okay based on that. I will, I will consult with the powers that be <laughs> to figure out if the dollar amounts seem reasonable. Yeah. Okay. So uh, these consultant fees are fixed. Well, they, I think that Ooh. they are payments made that the that the board, planning board will have to pay uh, the consultants out of. There is there replenishment is certainly considered. So mm. it's not just it's going to be eight hundred dollars and that's all. Sure, it's, sure. We're, we want to have eight hundred dollars on hand to be able to pay a consultant if the if when the uh, amount comes down to six hundred dollars when six hundred dollars is is spent and we only have twenty five percent left or two hundred dollars left we will then go to the applicant and say mm. so should we state in there that these fees are variable or be, because if we like we could box ourselves in a little bit here if if we're if we're not saying they're fixed and there's they're variable right they they may change depending on the consultant its purpose um should we state somewhere that there's a, a variable um yeah a, a variable yeah, amount yeah, per yeah. consultation yeah looking at 4.1 applicability the planning board shall impose a project review fee on those applications for, which require in the judgment of the planning board outside a review by outside consultants Okay. In hiring outside consultants, the board may engage engineers, planners, lawyers. Such assistance may include, but shall not be limited to analyzing, et cetera. It doesn't say anything about what the fees will cost. And, and, what we, and the um, section 53G, the law from the state set, allows imposition of reasonable fees for consultants. So yeah. should it say variable project review fee? I mean, I, I'm just, I, this is what we've learned. <clears throat> Language matters, clarity matters. And if it's not fixed by the figures that we have in our document, if we can say to um, a reasonable measure, the project review fee, there will be a variable review fee. I don't know, yeah, I'm yeah, a little yeah. concerned it's, about it's, just solidifying us into this dollar amount. I mean. If, if that's what we're going to go by, then that's what we have to go by. I don't like the word var variable because it, um, <laughs> because it could mean that, well, on your project, it's going to cost this and on your project, it's going to cost something else for the exact same thing. That's that, that wouldn't be appropriate. I think it's, it's really, it's, it's more dependent. about the engineer, the planner, it's or dependent the on, on the consultant. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. And, and Mary, I, I, I want to think about it a different way that it's maybe based on the town like if we could figure out what Greenfield and Amherst and what whomever pays on this schedule and we can offer something competitive then mm -hmm. we are deciding what we will pay and um instead of them deciding what they'll charge us um, <laughs> so oh I see what you're saying yeah. like, this uh, is what uh, boy I think Deerfield that's pays for it. if you so that's all right, if you get a brand new lawyer out of law school, you pay $100 an hour. If you've got a, a lawyer yes. who really knows what the heck's going on, you're paying $350 mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. Do you say, oh, we need to do this more inexpensively, so we're going to use the $100 uh, lawyer? I, I don't think that makes that, that makes sense. It I, depends on the expertise correct. of the correct. Maybe, but I think I agree with that. I definitely want that lawyer instead of that lawyer. <laughs> um, but I think that we also don't want the other side of it to be well, Greenfield pays twenty five hundred, and Deerfield pays you know thirty five hundred. So we're going to work for Deerfield because they we we can charge them a thousand dollars more. 
our attention is um, wanting to give our applicants a reasonable understanding of what they might be charged right. Correct. versus yes. not wanting to be yeah. hedged in. Right. 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 And the and the point of, of the fees is to cover the costs. It is never to make money. Right. Right. Um, maybe we should state that too. Maybe well, ask, I think that's yeah, no, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Maybe that, that is, um, that is, also Denise next. Yeah, I mean, first of all, so how old is this document is from 2015. 15. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And who decided on these fees back then? Right. So I mean, I I think we're gonna have a hard time really deciding this tonight. And I'd like to check with sure. people who are here then. I mean, Rachel might have an idea or, you know, Casey possibly mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Or again, I wonder, is this um, too loose if, well, if what we say is that Andrea researches this and comes up with something that is highly recommended by Casey, Brenda, whomever, mm -hmm. and puts that forward as a proposal proposal for discussion at our public hearing that in the meantime then becomes something that the public can discuss but also then if we have any other uh, modifications we can um, have that during our discussion period at the public hearing I mean otherwise we have the we could have the public hearing in August so so we're looking at do we continue with the document as is with a fixed fee or do we look at the again fees the fee the fee is not this is the initial deposited money okay paid into this uh g this general uh 53 g section 53 g law that allows us to uh, have consultants and pay them reasonable mm -hmm. amounts okay. it, it, it's not we're not saying we're going to only pay eight hundred dollars at the most for a project that that disturbs 600 square feet of land we are saying that if you're going to disturb about 600 feet of uh 600 square feet of land we want to have a deposit on hand okay. of 800 dollars okay. in order to pay our consultants so could we call it initial deposit instead of fee there you go yeah that might do it Give me the sentence, Initial please, point. Kathy. Well, I'm just saying instead of the word fee, where it says, you know, project size for proposals, blah, 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 $800 and, and so on, say initial deposit or initial fee to imply that this isn't the end of the road necessarily. Again, it's that wording thing. The state law uses the word fee. Okay, so that's fine. So I would be yeah. hesitant right. sure. to sure. change the Initial that. deposit of fees. So, hmm. yes. so, so what, at what point uh, during the process do we determine whether they need more? So that should be written so that it's not, you know, you've got the initial $800 and then what? So someone has to be reviewing Andrew what's now. happening. <laughs> Keep reading. Okay. Keep reading. Um, okay. Replenishment. Yes, replenishment, inspection phase, handling of project review fees. This is uh these are sections 4.4, 4 4.5, 4 4.6. Right. And we um there's also uh re refunding excess fees if you have a 513G account into which have been deposited these fees mm -hmm. and all of the uh, money is not needed to um, pay a consultant okay. the money is returned to the applicant mm -hmm. okay. so it again it's not a money maker it's just a way right. of holding money so that the planning board can pay consultants okay so i have another question so 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 that sounds good that's fine mm -hmm. so you know we can have this this obviously needs to be written into the contract that we have and then someone needs to enforce it right Okay, I mean, this is great to have it written down, but if we don't know at what point we may need okay. an, another opinion or an extended opinion, and who determines that? It's the building inspector or hiring. Well, know. these are planning board fees. So right. if, the, um, if we have a, um, 
site plan review mm -hmm. and we decide we need um, a consultant, right? Then the planning board decides that it um, wants these extra fees, and the fee no work is supposed to be taken on until the until the fees have been paid. Mm -hmm. There, um, there is discussion in this document about where you know the money goes into these um, 53G account, and the town accountant, town treasurer. We we have to let the, the town treasurer know that the monies yeah. have been deposited, and then the town treasurer is required to send us monthly <laughs> um, information about about bills that have been paid out of this account, or if we reserve, uh, if we receive, it's, a, it's, a, the, it's, a, there's a, it's, it's very specific, but it's very, who's the depositor? <laughs> The, the applicant. applicant. Okay. And they deposit into an account that is set up through the planning board or the town? The so 53G. The 53G. Yeah. Okay. So I think that the town accountant yes. creates this account. Okay. And in fact, there may be a standard 53G account for town, but that different, different projects, different projects. Um, funnel money into it and the town either accountant or clerk I have to see is the person is the person who keeps track and is supposed to inform the planning board of how the money has been spent so this is interesting kind of as a devil's advocate if if we're saying okay the consultant really needs to do another phase we need to go further you applicant need to give us more money mm -hmm. And they say sorry. <laughs> then we when would the application is over. Correct. So all app, so it I'm in um, section five delinquent accounts, for example. Five point three says all applicants owing fees to the planning board at the time of any amendment to these provisions shall be sent the following. So they get told that they're late. Mm -hmm. They get have a grace period. And then the work stops. Well, doesn't no? Doesn't this have to do with uh, whether we change these these regulations? Not necessarily whether we change the uh, amount of consultant fee. Does five point three all applicants owing is at the, at the time of any amendment, amendment to these provisions of the regulation? So I think it has to do with you know if somebody right now had any fees in process we would have to follow these provisions but it doesn't have to do with whether or not during their application things change i think people need to the applicant needs to be aware of this right. so that's, that's nothing in yeah. the yes. contract yeah. right right it's I basically mean, like it, a change order right yeah could it just start by saying initial deposited fee schedule so they understand there could be some fluctuation or variation in oh, it because nice. at the end it wraps it up pretty nicely um i don't know i i i, I like the term initial i think it does give a sense of um, so you're suggesting in um section four project consultant yes review fees where and where would the word i don't know right all right maybe just the, the title to all the fees right before yeah uh, something like that. i mean what i am schedule one... of the initial right. project review yeah. initial yeah. deposited fee schedule right before all the fees come because it 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 does indicate it is an initial amount it may be the final amount it just it, we don't okay. necessarily know that so rather than coming back to something and saying, guess what, eh, wasn't enough. And they'll have a sense that this is probably the right amount, but it could I mean, change. Yeah, as much as we want to have a public hearing in July, I wonder if there's enough questions here that in fact, we should have continued discussion on this in, ju this well, in July and then have our public hearing in August. Given that Casey may be gone and Jen is gone and you know, yeah. on vacation. Yeah, well, I feel like yeah. they have information we need. Yes, know? I would agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 
And I mean, Deandre, have you spoken to Brenda? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that would be good probably to see how many times this has actually yes. come up. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Interesting. Well, and yes. we did get pooched. The town did get pooched on some fees that they didn't collect from somebody. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 so thank you. Dear yeah. Yeah. Sure. And the process yeah. is important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Going okay. Um, so, I, were there, so the, yeah. So, uh, and the other question of, of so uh, we will, I will take this to be reviewed by, by Brenda. I'll, I'll start with her. Uh, is also this, this question in section 5.1. Oh, a very specific interest rate. Oh, yeah. And where did that mm. come from? Mm. Right. So, that's something for her, too. I think, yeah, that's 5.1. Back on um, hmm. 4.6, number two, E2, ooh, 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 ooh. it talks about um, that the applicant can look at, uh, can see how much of their money has been used up. Uh, so E2B, a report of all checks authorized for issuance since, really since the last statement. I mean, it's really since the last request uh, right here. Um, this is, I know, which, I'm sorry. Uh, e, the, before E, what, what are the numbers? Uh, here, so here we go. Where's four, six? Four, six, okay, thank you. A, B, C, D, E. Yes. Then there's two A, B. Gotcha. <laughs> and I'm just wondering. Can we make that a little larger? Sure. Thank you. Where is that one? Big or small? Yeah. <laughs> They're sort of ornamental at this point. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. I'm just wondering if the report of all checks authorized for issuance at they want it since the last it's really since the last time they requested the, the yeah. this is the applicant can ask to see uh, all the checks that we've written okay. from their escrow account basically. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't necessarily be from the last statement because okay, so maybe just, we've written a bunch. Right. Yeah. The latest statement from the I'm thinking instead of since the last. The okay, last so the, an accounting, I'm going back to capital letter E. So this is 4.6 E, an accounting of an applicant's funds held in the 53G account may be requested by the applicant at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the accounting will include, so the, la the latest bank statement, which would include, uh, all kinds of information and they're just saying to have the most up-to-date bank statement and so but i think yeah okay. well the the bank statement if the statement closes on the 30th and four checks came out on the second and the third they may not have right but you have to have some yeah like an endpoint I, an endpoint I, I guess yeah, yeah. Okay. so i, I so they may I think that I, I don't, I think it's that's, okay. yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, it's fine. Again, I think we're picking at straws. So I will talk to Brenda um, about these specific fee, these specific dollar amounts and about the um, interest rate for past due fees, which we hope we will not have. <laughs> And, and based on that, I will let you know what I find. And so perhaps June, July 11th is too early for mm, yeah. the public hearing. I have a question. So, okay, if when these fees are imposed, how does the, app, the applicant is filling out the application, is any of this in the current application? So I mean, Do we it, have an application form. No, I, don't, I mean, I don't, don't have anything. But, but you know, it should be in writing on the application instead of just verbally saying, "Hey, by the way, there are fees." Just oh, you know, I think that's. I you know I don't know whether we just read on. we just redid them right. Mm -hmm. No, Probably. well, actually, that's uh, we'll talk about that in ah. a minute with the planner that we're yeah. looking at updating okay. all of our applications. But I think that it probably is covered in that pre meeting that Jen has with applicants. Yeah. I think that's part of it. I mean, I don't know if it's 
That's what well, I'm a little bit again, is it, to make sure. is it in writing or is that just verbally so, conveyed? I like to see things in writing when sure. it comes to, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to see if, really quickly if I can find. <sighs> well, hold on. While you're doing that, thank you very much, Andrew. Yes. This is yes, thank you. So let's here's an application. I'm looking at an application for approval for preliminary plan of a subdivision. Oh, it's only one page. <laughs> okay. That is not a good example. Yeah. Let's try to find another one. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, but I mean we're talking about subdivision. So oh here, Alex has something. So that's for the second. Oh, this, our, our fee schedule is in the packet. Yes, and does it our say? Fee right. Well, it's the old it, one. Right. And Actually, this is interesting. This is, this is the one from 2008, not right. even the this is, uh, this approved is way, one from 2015. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, when I started this, all I saw was the 2008 version. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah, I think this, not really. this <laughs> needs a little more investigation aside okay. from tonight. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Andrew, who has been very up to snuff with trying to notify Jen Wallace about the uh, double announcements in the newspaper before the public hearing and then what needs to be posted and whatnot, will now say scratch all that. And that we will have this on our agenda for next week, our next, our, Je our July 11th meeting, we will continue discussions here with the hopes that we can have a public hearing in August. Is that everybody okay on that? that Okie dokie. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have any applicants. <coughs> do something with this. Ah, Kathy Sylvester, who is now our chair, thank you very much, Kathy, of our accessory apartment. First of all, is there anything else, Andrea? Are you all set? I just wanted to point out that I, I did find a form for site plan review application. And it does say on, oh goodness, on page, Uh, on the, the third, uh, on page eight, I believe, consultant peer review requested by planning board, yes or no. Date plans uh, to reviewer, date project specific account established. That would be uh, the 53, that's our 53G account. Consultant fee paid, funds deposited into account, additional funds deposited, unused funds returned. So these things are included on the form that applicants will see. That's not the one. That's oh, that's, no, and, no, in fact, that's for office use only. Yeah, that office use only. That's, <laughs> that's for what um, happens here um, in town hall. It is okay. very complicated. Simplification. That's a good goal. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the beat goes on. Wow. All right, Kathy, uh, accessory apartment work group. Yeah, so we had our first meeting um, in, in the, I don't know if you know, everybody knows who's on the committee. So Annalie thankfully was there and she was kind of the um, shadow chair, I'll call her. <laughs> she helped me a lot. And um, Jim Cambius was there from finance committee, Bob Decker from ZBA. Um, Carolyn Ness, as you know, select board. Patty Parag is a resident. Rachel was not in attendance, but she's on the committee. Chris Curtis wasn't able to make it, and Bob Walden were not able to make it. But <clears throat> basically, you know, I told them our purpose was to try to get information from the different boards and members in the community um, to bring uh, what their concerns and ideas might be on this accessory apartment bylaw draft to see 
um, what might need to change and, and give us some ideas to bring back to the planning board to see if we want to tweak this a little bit. Um, we talked about history of ADUs in Deerfield, why we want to change it. Um, one is residents that have expressed interest in having it changed and be not so narrow in scope. Um, and we talked about some of the advantages that might be increasing um, housing inventory, increased flexibility for homeowners, um, might increase property tax assessment, therefore increase revenues, and might increase workforce housing, housing for people that live in or, or that work in Deerfield. There were some questions, some considerations that came up. Um, if people on a septic wanted to add an accessory dwelling, how does that impact mm -hmm. the septic? They might, they would definitely need to do some kind of upgrade and that could put a burden on the Board of Health. If we had a lot of uh, requests, say in one year, um, how, how does it impact school enrollment? Should we allow ADUs uh, for properties on sewer by right or special permit? Um, how do you track ADUs when the house or the home is sold? Yeah. There was parking concerns, increasing the number of parking spaces uh, from one to two, because in currently in the draft bylaw, it says to increase parking spaces by one. Um, and we had generally agreed upon that an attached ADU would be by right and detached would be by special permit. There's a, um, in the definitions, it talks about it, the ADU would be not larger in floor area than half the floor area of the principal dwelling or 900 square feet, whichever is smaller. And we decided to change that because if you're primary house was 1200 square feet then an AD, you know an accessory apartment of 600 square feet would not meet most people's needs so we just exactly what happened in greenfield as soon as they passed it somebody took half their house and made it into an ADU. Hmm. how do you how do you mean like as soon as they passed their adu yeah by law um someone uh, there was a person who was waiting for it to pass and they quickly converted half the maximum amount of their space that they could, including an addition, and made it a giant ADU, which then they moved into and rented out the other part of the house. Okay. So I guess we want to, uh, the lesson that I took away from that is that um, maybe not um, so big a percentage, like, I mean, what do we really want to see in like making that accurate? Well, the current draft says whichever is smaller, 900 square feet or half, we decided to just make it 900 square feet maximum and not worry about half the square footage of the primary house because it could be quite small in that case, right? Um, and we another change is that it could be owner occupied in either unit. So the primary residence or the accessory <clears throat> dwelling could be occupied by the the owner. Um, so anyway, we, we are still working. We have another meeting on uh, June 28th. And hopefully the different members will bring back information from their boards and we can talk about it further. And um, Annalie and I met with Chris Curtis about some of the concerns. He's tweaking the, the, the language to see if we can incorporate some of these concerns and uh, we'll get back to you when we have more information. But I'll also add as, as um, Kathy was very good in exp in sort of introducing to the committee, um, but we'll also remind everyone on the planning board that this is a, essentially an advisory work group. We weren't looking at them to be micro editing mm -hmm. the, um, <laughs> the draft bylaws that uh, from the working group, Kathy and the group will be submitting suggestions that then the planning board will address. Right. Kathy. Uh, Anne there, do you have another? Oh, I was just saying oh. thank you. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yeah. 
um, are there any other questions that have sort of popped up for planning board people that Kathy might want to take back to the I, I don't have any questions. I've got a few comments. Okay, sure. Go no, for the it. comment when you say make affordable rental housing units available, that I, you know, I'm you're talking I'm, about the purpose. I'm really not sure whether I mean what do you what what is affordable? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of units around, you know, they're charging twelve, mm -hmm. fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And if someone's going to be putting the money into making an accessory dwelling, uh, I'm sure they're going to be charging more than, you know, six hundred dollars, seven hundred. You know, you've got to get your return on investment when you do these things. So, I, you know, it's making affordable. I think is questionable. I, I mean, I think you know some people who have um, who have greater means may be able to do that, and they're doing it for a family member, and that's mm -hmm. great. Family members moving in, they're paying for that. But I think it's going to be a stretch for a lot of people to do that and not charge market market rate. Another thing is, you know, considering. I mean, I'm on septic, and it, if for us to be able to do something like that, we would have to probably redo our septic right. to at least thirty thousand sure. dollars, and then have an affordable. So I, I think it's I think it's going to be few be few and far between the amount of people who actually do this, and I think anybody who does will probably be on on the town sewer. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think we talked that this is not primarily to address affordable housing. It it helps people stay in their home maybe as they age may give them uh, a little bit more income if they don't have to like build another unit but they might just have to modify their home yeah. um, so they may not have to spend a lot of money and get something from it either a little income or just somebody there to help them um, but just less restrictive than what we have now <laughs> and some people in town have asked for this and yeah, if they want to build something for three hundred thousand dollars because they got to do their septic over, well, I mean that's their business, right? Because as some people were, you know, saying um, they didn't want this, but I, I'm like, you know, I could put up a three car garage right next to your property within the setback, and it could be five car garage if I can get that through the planning board, and it's as ugly as hell, and you're, you know, so what? You're gonna have to live with it because it's my property. So I think that, you know, we can pick some, some not, not this committee, but others can pick arguments with, you know, we don't want ADUs, but you really can't totally control what people put on their property now. Right, and we wanna give, if you, I'm sorry, Mary Clinton here. <laughs> we also wanna give people who already have those units in their homes a way to have them legally, you know, and that right. might be a means of providing affordable housing when it's not a new, project yeah mm. right and um, you have to address the bigger issue of affordable housing units so we don't get an unfriendly 40 b but that's another issue for another time that's not going to be this bylaw it was interesting um it might be that the people who are on the work group were sort of hand-picked or hand volunteered but um in general there really was support for the accessory apartment bylaw revisions and moving forward um so that was good to hear yeah i i have a question this is andrea. this is andrea um and i'm sure you'll be surprised here i'm going to ask you about fees in um in 3941 uh you say that there'll be a non-refundable fee shall be included with the application do we want to say what that fee would be is it you know to get do we need to include it in our schedule of administrative fees? Mm, good question. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, <very> <laughs> oh, well, it's a, it's a special permit fee. It would be a special permit fee? Oh, that's true. It looks okay. like uh, an approval of a special permit, uh, kind of a special permit for an accessory apartment shall be the same as prescribed in section 5300 so that must be our special permit section is it anybody have their i i have one here i think say something. do you know that alex is 5300 special permits yeah okay so it's special permit oops okay yeah, okay. um yes and why why are we giving away that permitting i'm just playing why are we why are here. we why would it be a special permit why can't we be the permitting body no, we're not. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I get confused. I get confused with all the different catchphrases. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have a question. Know where you're going. I have a question. Emily. Do you think that's clear, though? Um, I mean, that it doesn't seem like it's a special permit for accessory apartments. Maybe if we don't, if we don't um, well, so capitalize accessory apartment there. Or, or, or if in 3941, it says a non-refundable special permit fee. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. Or special permit review fee, because now it's called special permit <laughs> review. Okay, cool. Yes. I have a question. Yeah, Kathy's got that there. Yes, Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba. So in 3920, um, it talks about restrictions and prohibitions for short-term rental, like Airbnb, that kind of thing. But then, and this caught my attention earlier too, 3934, it says that you, um, they will occupy one of the dwelling units as their permanent or primary residence, except for bona fide temporary absences. So like, what does that mean? When people go to Florida for half the year. Well, so then that then I wonder, does that open up that Airbnb piece? I don't know. I, I just don't understand what bona fide temporary. I mean, unless they went into a, a, a like a nursing home or they had surgery, they went into rehab or they were in a car or something, something, something to that effect. But if if it's that, if they're just going to Florida for the winter, but what and happens to that back space? And then it's a, well, just a rental. Well, certainly one of the things we discussed in the meeting work or the work group, Kathy helped me with this, is that if people rent this as Airbnb, we're not, we have no control over that. Right. Uh, in terms of a temporary options, I mean, that could be something well, we put in our definitions. Except for the fact that there, you have to have notarized statements, right? That no, the notarized statement is that the that there will be an owner in one of the units. Right. It's yeah, uh, this is Amy Clear. I think only because we had an applicant come before us and say, well, we're putting this accessory dwelling on our house because someday we're going to retire there. Right mm -hmm. now we're going to rent out both of them, but it's still our accessory dwelling because maybe sometimes we'll live there and we have family friends who are living there. And when we come back, we, we go and we live there and they go and they stay with other relatives. So it's really our place that they're just babysitting until, you know what I mean? So that was an actual case that, yes. that came to us. Yes, I mean. So I want, I think that we should be trying to avoid that. Correct. So by Correct. saying, oh, the snowbirds can do it. Right. We're opening ourselves up to a mm -hmm. can of beans. Mm -hmm. Let me mix some more metaphors. But you know, worms, worms. <laughs> so, <laughs> wormy uh, beans. <laughs> we go We're back to this, beans. except for bona fide temporary absences. Like, what? I don't think that should be in there. I don't even know what that means. Like, yeah, that could be anything. That's right. a big, huge can of worms. Right. Or right. Beans. Who bona fides it? Me? Well, maybe we need to define it. Uh, we may yeah. need to define that term. Yeah. I would like to get rid of it yeah. all, but I guess we're not writing by law right now. Oh, that's good. Good discussion for the group too. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, this is helpful. Yeah. Like we will, we don't want to give like a back way to have a, just a rental property. Right. 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 No, I agree. Short term rental. Can I? Property. I just want to say one yes. other thing. Yes, Kathy Wittroba. So the accessible units thirty nine forty two. When they talk about reasonable deviation, I think that's a little tricky too. Like, what's reasonable? I mean based on what we don't we don't know what those conditions might be i mean the planning board will allow reasonable deviation from the stated conditions were necessary to install features that facilitate access and mobility i don't know what, i don't even what is reasonable deviation uh, I well, what? yeah and from the stated conditions which stated conditions right. are we talking just about physical I mean, appearance I, or are we talking about 900 square feet Yes, and are we talking about like what is it external deviation? Is it internal deviation? Mm -hmm. I think it's just that I think again this goes back to an issue issue of definition. Right? And How are it, we defining that? I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. That's okay. Amy okay. Clear. And is it going to deviate because it's becoming ADA accessible, or right. is it going to deviate for some other reason? Like, I don't know. I feel like that should be. Like, what if it was above a garage, and so there's a there's like a 
exterior elevator kind of thing because somebody was arthritic and they couldn't walk up the stairs. I mean, so what's the reasonable deviation? Right. <laughs> well, that's a good question for Chris because yeah. um, this was written before I was on the planning board. So I'm not sure what the um, intent was there. Okay. Well, See, but they're good that questions. Perfect, because these are the kinds of questions that we'll get under. I think it's language fire. that doesn't mean anything. Right, I think it was probably language that was delivered to us from some other body yeah, that sure, was like, here's sure. a, yeah. right. I don't know. I don't know what it means. Yeah. Anyway, so I think those Good. are. Good. Any other questions? This is helpful, I think. Yeah. Very helpful. I have one more question. Yes, Anne Mary. I wonder if um, container houses specifically came up in conversation. Mm -hmm. They could be a hot button issue, really. We've talked about uh, this doesn't have, well, that we can't do t tiny houses, but not, we didn't say anything about container houses. What did I- Are you talking about mobile homes? Sort of no, they're prefab. sort of like um, prefab homes, yeah. right? They yeah. take shipping containers and yeah. people build them out themselves, but you can also yeah. have them prefab built out for you and they come in in a crane and they you know, plop it on your property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you they're have free to just, I, if you want. Yeah. Well, I think they have to meet their special permit regulations, whether it was septic or not, you know, accessibility, that there's some specific wording in here, you know, well, of course, that would be a detached unit. Right. Um, I was just wondering right. if they came up specifically. No, 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 no. We didn't talk about that. But if it's detached, then it goes as a special permit and we have to address. Right. And then it's whether or not it's an issue of. I don't know. Well, it's basically it's the same. same as I think it also could be attached. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that's actually, I think they're quite fabulous. Depends. <laughs> yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Hi. 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 So the whole issue of container homes can be something for us to look at. Be. Sure. Some people have strong feelings about things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're doing here. Oh, well, boy. and I think that they, if I just, okay. So that is a way oh, to tell us how you feel. <laughs> that is a way to create affordable housing on small lots that we want to fill in. Like it, all of the things that we have been talking about using these smaller lots in the middle of town um, and also having, um, you know, smaller setbacks for um, some proposed projects. But also this is a way that you can create a dwelling that doesn't cost three hundred thousand right. dollars. You know, you can get them for forty thousand dollars. You sure. can get empty ones mm -hmm. for much cheaper. You can get them for six thousand dollars and build it out yourself. So, you know, this might, whatever, I'm not saying it's gonna solve our problems, but if somebody came along and wanted to do it, it would be an easy way to make something affordable. Okay, cool. Any other? My two cents. I like them. No. <laughs> I think they're affordable and good. I do too. And they most likely will be brought up at some point. So let's bring it up now and try to address it. Anybody else? Nope. I have one more. This is Kathy Utrecht, but I have one more thing. <laughs> yes, Kathy. I think the other piece, and it's separate but related to these ADUs, is how do we incentivize people who have current in-law apartments to come forward to say they have them, right? So we have a sense of what our inventory is. Can we give them no fees if it's already existing? Like, can we say, bring your plans to us and we're not going to charge you for... Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to give you that initial. I mean, I think the other piece too is so if so, we enact this and we say this is what our bylaws are related to accessory dwelling units. And if anybody happens to have one um, and you are not in compliance with this and something should happen on your property, your insurance may not cover um, any damages that are done if there isn't quote unquote, in-law apartment that is there illegally. Yeah, this is one of the things we kind of talked about was the whole issue of monitoring. And um, kind of Carolyn was out. quite concerned as she's been at other meetings too, in terms of Board of Health, not really having the bandwidth to be able to <laughs> be monitoring other than potentially on a complaint basis. Sure. But we're not doing like some some towns that suggest with some of these, certainly with the, um, the short-term rentals that there are annual board of health inspections and, uh, you know, 
we're not planning on doing that with this. So I guess the question kind of would be, why do we want to have an inventory other than? Well, if we were looking at how are we gauging our numbers for affordable housing, right? Mm -hmm. And so say it's in somebody's house that they've been living in forever and, and, and um, they move into this in-law apartment and their children move in, that becomes an affordable housing piece of property. Yeah. Because they can stay in their home. It's actually becomes two affordable pieces of property, right? For the family that's moving back in and the person who originally lived there who has the in-law apartment, right? So how are we, how are we, how are we knowing who's living in our town? How are we complying with um, our own bylaws? And, and how do we um, look at our numbers for affordable housing? I think we, we don't know. Yeah, it's our think tank. This is the Mary Clue again. And I mean, I think that this keeps coming back as an issue, right? That yeah. we don't have any enforcement. Well, I, I guess instead of writing our bylaws around like, oh, geez, we don't have enforcement, maybe the town should think about how to enforce things because it's impacting our ability to write bylaws. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But that I takes. Ultimately, we want to know our. I, I believe it's the town, we want to know what our housing inventory is. And so basically you're also saying, how do we incentivize people who maybe even doing this on the side to be able to come forward and say, yeah. Without fear. I mean, I think the other yeah. piece is, you know, property tax. So if you have an in-law apartment that nobody knows about and it's, mm. it's on record that it's a three bedroom house when really it's a three bedroom house and this in-law apartment, that would increase the property tax. And so that might does be it? something that's a concern. I would think maybe it would if it changes the square footage. Well, if it doesn't it change, it change the square footage, you know, if they've just changed the attic or the basement, they've made the basement into an accessory apartment. Maybe, right. Then no, I, mean, I guess it, maybe it would not. It's, it, well, it could change the assessed value, I would right, think. Sure. That, yeah, so sure. from that standpoint, it would increase taxes. Correct. yes. Oh, so that's... Not an, that's an incentive not to. That's exactly right. Away. That's an incentive, incentive not to. So, so that's the question. Like, how do we shift that to an incentive to open up our understanding of who's in our community, where are our people living, for a variety of reasons? I mean, I don't think we're in a town. It's not that big where there's just tons of these hidden in-law apartments anywhere, right? But I do think understanding our inventory and and um, making it so that people want to come forward and not hide back is sure. like yeah. how friendly right. can we make right. it, I guess is what it is. Chris did a uh, survey of five or six uh, neighboring towns and in general they have what Kathy two to three apartments a year maybe yeah it's not many yeah, yeah. very few minimal okay um, and by the way Jen Gannett got back to me and from how, what she can tell is we have 30 affordable units in our town, which she admits is probably not accurate, but she doesn't know how to really get a handle on all that information. Because if you remember at our last meeting, I think she spoke of all the different housing authorities that could have a hand in providing affordable housing in our town, and she doesn't know how to get all that information from those different entities so 30 is not enough we know that so yeah, even if it's 60 it's still not enough yeah you need a couple hundred or so right as a uh, we'll close this discussion and then i'll um give a little bit more on that one but do we have any other suggestions for the work group well i think kathy? this just popped into my head i'm sorry this is kathy with trouble um, so we were talking about when we send out the census. I mean, my dog is on our census, right? Every year. <laughs> so they all know that I have a dog on 18th Air Street along with everybody other dog. But, but somebody had made a suggestion on our board and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was about asking on that census, is there an accessory unit within the home? Could that be a checkbox? I mean, they know what my occupation is and that I have a dog and how many people live in my house. Like, could we just ask a question? Is there an accessory unit on this property? I mean, they could easily check no, 
right? But at least we've asked the question, seeking the inventory. So, mm -hmm. so it gives us some leverage to say, well, this, you know, I don't know. Sounds like another work group for the census. <laughs> <laughs> now it's census. What else should be? Yeah. You'd be asking because well, all that people, other people would want to know other information as well. That's very true. Yeah, actually, Kathy, too, it seems like there have been a number of these questions that might go to the assessors mm. or that we should have an assessor on the committee. But mm. ah. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Well, or to ask them at this point, we've already, I mean, we're probably only going to have two or three meetings at the most. So, huh. Okay. Good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, good point. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. So to be continued um, at our July meeting, Kathy will give a report on the next meeting. In relation to the Department of um, Housing and Community Development, um, Jen, as Kathy mentioned, did do a fair amount of research to try to pin down what are our numbers of affordable houses here in Deerfield. Um, yes, I think she did say that she found around 30. I was able to actually get an answer today from um, DCHD the HCD, whatever, um, that um, they believe we have 21. So we do have a few more to report back. Um, uh, we were supposed to, the, the, the letter from the state came to uh, the town administrator, select board, zoning board, and planning board. And um, the select board asked Jen to respond. She began by spending quite a bit of effort, I think, looking into the number of units, um, but then did not get the letter written out yet. So I offered to um, draft the letter and then have select board, Casey, whomever, take a look at it. Um, my Certainly my desire overall is that even though we want to sort of get the heat off us if we can, um, that we want to be genuine in mm -hmm. recognizing that we have a responsibility to increase our housing in Deerfield and that we are working on that in a variety of ways. Yeah. And this is Andrea, and I assume be aware that this is an issue everywhere. Sure. That's it is right. not, it is not right. unique to, to Deerfield. I mean, a lot, you know, number of, yeah, I don't know what the percentage is, but so a lot of towns certainly look at it very closely. I just thought about somebody if you don't mind make a comment. Yes, um, this woman that I know, um, from when I worked up in Vermont, actually has written uh, written a book. It's more than a manual on shared housing, and she's been working on that for years. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just this you know certain situation. We may have you know a widow who's living in one of the big old houses here in Deerfield, who doesn't want to leave their home but really can't afford it. You know, taxes and just the upkeep. And so there is certainly a potential of someone being able to move in, could be a grad student from UMass, could be, could even be a young family. And, you know, in turn, moving in, they could mow the lawn, they could do some, whatever, whatever it is, whatever is decided in, you know, they should have a contract. Yeah. <laughs> but, so basically um, a roommate situation. Yeah, sort of a roommate. Um, and so that's something that I, I think I had mentioned to Lily at one point. You know, it's not really senior, but it could be senior housing, shared housing. So I could um, check in with her, get back in touch with her and see if she would be willing to come and speak. But what would the appropriate group be for her to speak to? Would that be to do a presentation before the planning board? Would it be for senior housing? So, you know, you don't have to give an answer now, but just think about that. And then I'd be happy to get in touch with her. Cool. Okay. Because I, I mean, that, that could be. Question? Are yeah, you talking and Mary, about so shared sure. housing as affordable housing? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I get confused for a second. Yeah, I mean, it has. It's it's a win win situation for a lot of people. It's not not for everyone, but it does work for some people. Sure. So. I will boost our numbers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um. So good discussion. Um. So next on our agenda is our um, planner. I believe that's next, isn't it? Yes. Um, so uh, Denise, Jen, Casey and I had a Zoom conversation with Ken 
Komina, is that how you pronounce his name? I think it's Komina, Komina um, from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Commission. <laughs> um, and then subsequent to that, um, Jen did have a few more conversations with um, uh, FERCOG. Um, as you remember, the background of this being that um, we were able to go to PVPC, which uh, Deerfield is not in their catchment area, but the reason we were able to really um, access their services is because FERCOG, who does cover Deerfield, does not have planning services available for us. Um, and um, so subsequent to our conversation with um, PBPC, uh, Jen did get a little bit more information from FERCOG, uh, and it sounds like in relation to actually some services that potentially are already covered by the fees that we that we pay to FERCOG. I'm a little uncertain about that, but it sounded like it. Just looking at the email from Casey, you got this. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's very exciting. So um, I did send out. Uh, or I passed out here and um, Kathy here, or I, I don't know, I don't even know if I sent it. Here we go, share screen, where am I share screen? Okay. Um, you sent it in a like- Oh, did I? Things. Yeah, okay. okay, here we go. Excel. Excel, here we go. Why will it not drag here? Let's go. Oh. Um, and we will zoom big. Zoom. For all of us, not just, yeah. Um, so, um, the process being, oopsie, that, um, I guess we'll put it underneath, that, um, we are going to be developing a contract of services for, um, PVPC and also, um, attached to that contract will be a scope of services. Um, which in general discusses what we expect the can <laughs> the planner to do. Um, and um, where we began with all of this was really all the conversations that we in the planning board have been having for quite a while um, about initiatives that we want to take. So um, so, uh, this first page here uh, talks about uh, potential services that Ken could offer, um, you know, as we very broadly speculate how much time it would take, we came up with 117 hours, and we're only contracting for 100, so there you go. Um, May I ask why some things yes, are in Andrew, red? Oh, well, it was red. just to try to help you see that... It's like underlining. <laughs> um, certainly wanting to make sure that we, um, that the planner helps um, us determine if there are other free programs that could do work instead of Ken doing it. Um, and we also want to be able to um, hopefully start to compile data, especially on money brought in or expenses saved um, by having the planner. And I think Casey said she does have some templates for that from some other town. Um, drafting decisions did seem to be one thing for sure that uh, FERCOG mentioned that they would not be able to assist us with. So um, uh, that is um, something that uh, would be wonderful and also have tried to develop a template for us so that um, on a regular basis, we don't have to be reinventing the wheel. Um, this ties in up, updating the application processes ties back to what Andrea was talking about earlier. And um, <laughs> Alex brought us the application that doesn't have up to date fee schedule in it right now. So um, that may be rolling off a log and it may be quite a challenging, um, challenging, uh, piece, but um, certainly as I was talking to other towns, uh, having user-friendly applications seems to be one of yeah. the most compelling things for developers. So let's make sure it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, 
how can we increase our housing inventory? That certainly has been a, a, what we've been talking about tonight. Um, and, you know, many different ways to do it. And this would be one of the things we would reply to DCHD that we are looking at. Um, this 40R piece is um, that there are, as, as Denise was saying, there are some new um, pieces of legislation in Massachusetts that um, it, to encourage basically dense uh, center-ish, center, urban-ish, center, uh, dense housing, um, and then there's a, a, re a related 40R to increase housing inventory and related 40S that um, there could be some state reimbursement to um, pay if in fact um, additional school costs are incurred because more families are there with school children. Um, I'll say as an aside with my work on the senior housing committee that um, there's a little bit of tension about having dense housing, you know, how much do you want to sort of be stuck in a development that, and especially stashed away somewhere. Hey, Annalie, I, I, yes. guess, I guess I'm just a little confused looking at this. So are you talking about, okay, you're talking about triage as possible to PVC, okay. So what you're defining here, are you talking about PVPC doing or the FERCOC or we're just PVPC. looking through? No, this would be this would be attached to the contract for Ken with our contract with PVPC for Ken. And mm. this would essentially, I mean, it's not really a, jo a job description, but basically it's our expectations of what he will be doing with us over the next year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot um, here. Is this possible to, um, to look at these and prioritize and do we need to attach um, hours next to, I, I find that. Well, that's where we've speculated hours here. And to some degree, they have been prioritized through the conversation with you and Denise. Or, and, I just um, didn't realize that we were actually going to put hours down. Oh, I don't think we will in oh, terms good. of the um, yeah. contract. No, but just as a conversation point for okay. tonight. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, okay. It's just, I was looking at the email that, that Casey sent after her conversation with Linda Dunlavy, and it seems like the FERCOG is going to be able to do a lot more and that we were just going to look at, to Ken to do the applications first, but. Right, well, okay. that's where on page two, um, subsequent to yep. the meeting that I attended with you, I've kind of put down what would potentially be happening with FERCOG. Mm -hmm. um, they mentioned that they might be able to work with us on some bone zoning bylaw yeah. changes, but they were saying that they anticipated that for annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's really mm -hmm. for a year yep. from now. Mm -hmm. um, that they also, this is, and this is cool that they might be able to assist us with figuring out how to move forward with our master plan. Initially, we were thinking that might be something that Ken could do. Um, and also that they might even be able to help us with bundling grants and writing some grants, yeah. um, but that we would want to bundle together some different mm -hmm. um, projects in those grants. Um, and then there was the question about, um, you know, looking again at our tourism overlay bylaw. Um, so, um, So, um, well, first of all, this, well, we will end up with a, we might even call it a draft scope of services on the contract. I'm not certain how that works, but um, Ken is planning on coming to our planning board meeting um, in July. Okay. So he'll meet us, we'll have a chance to sort of talk with him um, he can, uh, you know, we may have the contract in place by then. It may be just moments away from being in place. So if we feel like at that point, that there's more prioritization that can happen at that meeting, does that seem like a good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next step? I guess in the meantime, as you look at, um, oh, I see some notes from Andrea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as you look at, these potential um, responsibilities, if there's something else that you'd like 
to see addressed or or considered if you could send that to me the one Andrew, thing yes yeah it, grant writing grant writing grant writing yeah. Uh, yeah denise you remember i mean he he's a planner yeah, he that's, assists that's some his, but it's not really no. his I think he more so becomes aware of grant opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and then it may be that actually from what we're seeing from FERCOG is that FERCOG potentially could help yes. us with writing some grants. Yeah, well, they already did. I mean, they did, they, they did as a matter of fact. I think I can, did we announce that? We did get the um, grant funding for shared streets and spaces, which is $113,000 and that will cover the crosswalks going across from Frontier, two different ones, then across from the park, and then also flashing beacons. Mm -hmm. So it'll slow traffic down, make mm -hmm. it a lot safer. And then at some point, I think we do have in our um, budget, I think for sidewalks to then do the sidewalk that goes from Frontier to the park. So, I mean, you know, FERCOG is a, and they were able to do that to no, co no cost for us. And then we used another group um, that was funded through, I think, the Bar Foundation. So, I think it's interesting that, um, I mean, my understanding is that certainly Casey's quite connected with FERCOG, that talks with them all the time. We've talked with them many times. Um, they've known that we need assistance, but to some degree, only upon hearing that we're going to PVPC, have they kind of gotten a you know, then, yeah, you know. Well, I think Casey said that they, they're they planning on hiring a planner, but in the conversation, I don't, I don't know what the process is. I don't know if they've put it out there yet. And I just know personally from hiring people, oh, it yeah. takes right. a long time <laughs> and then to train people. So it, it could be, it could be a year. Right. But suddenly we seem to be higher on their list. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Which is very good. Interesting. <laughs> But they've been good to work with, so. Yeah, oh yeah, you know, I know great. a lot. I mean, certainly I've been so impressed with the Lucilla Rose. Mm -hmm. Well, so again, I guess um, for all of you, um, if you can either forward to me your notes or your questions or um, keep in, I don't know, we'll try to, I'll try to keep you informed um, between now and our July meeting. Right. Uh, it may be with various vacations and whatnot that it that we'll just be finalizing the contract then, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, and just just another suggestion. When doing the contract, you know, I mean, we only have X amount of hours. Like you said, we've got a hundred hours, and so you know, I would think I, it might be helpful for everyone to look through and prioritize what are the yes. three top priorities, yeah. Yeah. and then when we write in his contract that we will have certain points along the way that we'll have that conversation to see where he as where he is in the process and we can also i mean some things are more important than others as far as i'm concerned concerned um and then we can we can reallocate funds to that and make a change so that it's not set in stone i'd like it oh. to be a little more flexible yeah we won't have i mean um, again i think the hours of the offer yeah. will be no yeah no, right. no, yeah but right. you know thinking other than about, I have no idea or hours. taking him time. off of one thing saying okay enough with the applications right. let's go right. write some decisions yeah. or something like okay. that yeah right cool Good. all right thank you what's that on that one all righty so now the yeah. maybe the hardest part of our whole agenda um we Ooh. did last year and want to again this year have a training session uh jen i know has been collecting uh, and actually even copying things to upgrade our manuals. I have a lot of things that is Denise, and, so. And I apologize because I think you may have asked me to talk to Jen about, uh, maybe you have, oh. about doing a training session and when is the best time to do a training session? Well, yeah, so I think um, probably then, which is the cart and which is the horse, um, if we are able to say, uh, and before I think we had, it was a morning, wasn't it, we were? Well, we should better think about summertime vacations. I know Aunt Mary's planning a great vacation. So, um, but she has in the past sent us out little um, surveys, right? Where she'll propose several different like times. And we all, yeah, 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 yeah. So 
uh, see what time she has available. Sure. In general, yeah. though, is, are there certain days that just never will work or Talk yeah. to people Times who are, are employed. Kathy, Kathy mm -hmm. Sylvester is. Yeah. yeah. Kathy, yes. Well, my schedule is right now, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. In August, it's going to change. So it'll be more variable. So, yeah, there's, and I can't tell you what days will or won't work if we're going that far out. Yeah. Okay. So the I'm, question then would be if, uh, Denise, if you can talk with her as to, or I can just send her an email and ask her, Jen, to yeah, when, propose. When she gets, yeah, when she gets. I mean, it's almost like a survey monkey to sort of. Yeah. yeah. Cat is going crazy. That'll be fun. The three of you. <laughs> is your sky falling, Kathy? Uh, she's chasing a moth. <laughs> she's all over the place. So. Well, don't let her land on your face like my cat did. <laughs> I see it online, but I've got scratches like. Oh. Yeah, that was great. Okay. Okay, so we'll do a survey monkey for that. Um, oh, we did get a um, last night. This is sort of although I say hold on in Gardens, but then I would be under. Business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours. Um, we did get a brief um, letter, which is just fine from Ember Gardens. Uh, basically, their update is that they hey. have some. Oops. <laughs> they, they have submitted their license applications to the Cannabis Control Commission for cultivation and manufacturing. Um, there was a first review of these applications and um, the CCC requested six additional pieces of information which were provided and now it's being reviewed. And in the meantime, there is due diligence, especially with Eversource um, that is uh, happening in term and should be completed in June, so. I guess the bottom line with that is that they, and of course they're not starting any um, uh, construction or anything until all of that is finalized. So trying to keep on top of that. Um, public comment, <laughs> Mr. Public, <laughs> no. Okay. okay. No one's on. All right. Uh, any committees or seminars? I realize I need to keep track of when I do my seminars. Yeah. Um, certainly had our committee reports today, but there's an open space committee meeting tomorrow, which I found out about today. Well, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you want reports? Uh, yeah, I don't know if there are any reports otherwise. I mean, oh, okay. Well, I can, I can report that. Um, the grant writer that we worked with um, for um, CCI, Alice, um, just submitted the, per, the application for the community one stop. And that was submitted, I don't know, last week. So, and it was for that is for doing architectural drawings and engineer, you know, planner um, for the. Uh, turning the former grammar school senior center into the municipal building and then adding on a um, senior community. house, senior community center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if we get the full amount, it would be $400,000. And we could potentially, and the, the application was a little confusing, we may have access to some other funds as well. But that wasn't as specific. So I, we're not going to hear about that, I don't think, until October. Unfortunately, it takes a long time. Mm. But, but that's done. So that's good. That's awesome. Okay. All right. <clears throat> any other reports or seminars? I don't believe we had any mail. And um, whoops. Well, our next meeting still is uh, the uh, 11th, although it's not the public hearing. Stated on the agenda. May I ask who yes, and who should I talk to about scheduling a public hearing if if Sue's not, if here. Sue's not here, Jen's not here, mm. and Casey's not here? When 
public hearing for what and when? Or you mean for canceling the one? Well, for for canceling the one and and, and establishing the August date yeah. for them. I'm sorry. Oh, so, yeah. so, so, so the posting of the yeah, public hearing for August, that's, that's what we're really, okay. uh, so that we probably have time we, for that. And those yeah. need to be pu published two, two weeks in two advance, full weeks. two full weeks in advance. And, and, yeah. Yeah, Alex, I think you're right. I don't think that was because I spoke with Casey today and she did mention, oh, if you're going to do that, you know, let's, I said we were talking about that tonight. Right. So the fact that. I mean, maybe what we can do is just. Well, I can. I, I will. It, given that it's not until August, I will send oh. the email to Jen, mm -hmm. and and they will. Um, she'll act on it when she returns. Right. But also in terms of making sure that there's nothing sent in for July. Super a lot is still here this week, so that's important because we okay. want to pay for a public hearing posting that we're not going to do oh, if right. they still think that uh, it's on for July. Okay. So cancel the cancel seventh below. Right. Okay. Good question. If it was yeah. even done, I'm not sure whether it was or not. Well, no, I don't. Yeah. But right. But good good reason. Wow. Sure. Oh well then. So I should talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else miscellaneous ish? No, you, no, but you know what? We should have, Alex, you should have come to the mic. So, so for, the, for the purposes of the minutes, can you just come to the mic and just say that? Thanks. Okay. Uh, what did you want me to say again? What's your name? <laughs> okay, so my name is Alex Hershenreiter. Um, So as you guys all know, um, Sue is leaving us, unfortunately. I think Friday is her last day. So I will be filling in. Um, I've been training with her since last Thursday. Um, so hopefully um, I will be sticking around for a week or two weeks or something like that until they figure out a new person. Um, Can you spell your last name? Yep, H E R. C H E N R E D E R. Um, and at the moment, um, email, important emails, like related to postings and things like that are going to me from Jen. Um, so yeah. And She's forwarding them to you. Sorry. It's gonna you're be what? Yeah. A Hershen Ritter at Deerfield.ma. Deerfield no, I don't have a Deerfield um, no, no, no. email yet. No, it's, um, if you send her an email, you get my email. It'll have the, it'll do the automatic response, but um, yeah, I don't want to give it out. Okay. But, <laughs> All right. But yeah, email, email her and um, you'll get it. Okay. Um, and like I said, I'll be here all week with Sue. So good. Hopefully, I thank you. Something. All right. Okay. All right. If there's no other business, can we have a motion to? I motion we adjourn. Second. All um, right. Discussion and let's see. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Amory Cloutier, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Retrova, yes. And Lee Wolf Cool, yes. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Great. See you Thank you. In July. <laughs>